I'm Connor Old, and this is Old Oscar Countdown. Today, we're going to be looking at the Best Director category. And, uh, can't you tell? I'm sort of wearing my director outfit. This is not, not necessarily the jacket, but the hat, that beige hat, and these sort of, uh, movie set headphones I have on here. <laughs> I decided it'd be a little theme for this one, as much as I can be for Best Director. Anyways, uh, we've been doing really good so far, being on track, being doing really well. We've had, looked at all Best Picture and all the acting categories. Now we're going to be looking at some more technical ones. And who is the most technical and the mastermind behind the whole movie is the best director. Now, if you didn't know, this is Old Oscar Countdown, where every week, uh, leading up to the Oscars, we predict the nominations. Up until the Oscar nominations. And then we, we predict the nominations, and then based on there, I'll predict the Oscars. Essentially, every week, we break, we break down a category, list off all the names, and then go each one. Why I think this is my prediction and why not. And uh, if you want to see what's going on for the next sort of whole week, watch my last video just to have a little more of an explanation why some categories will be grouped and others will be uh, revamped or redone again. So, here I've got off my iPad once again. I'm going to be going through the entire list and then I'll be going uh, and saying which ones are my definites and which ones are my possibles. Now, so let's go for the possibles, let's go for the definites and then the possibles. Martin Scorsese, Silence. Damien Chazelle for La La Land. Kenneth Lonergan for Banshee's by the Sea. Sidney Villeneuve for Arrival, and Barry Jenkins for uh, Moonlight. And my possibles, Pablo Lorrain for Jackie, Denzel Washington for Fences, and Ben Affleck for Live By Night. Now let's go into the first one, Martin Scorsese for Silence. Uh, I once again, I say this on a lot of episodes, uh, Silence is sort of one that's hard to judge because it's going to be so late in the year. Early buzz, very early buzz, is that it's good, but uh, it, there's not enough buzz to sort of determine. But I have Scorsese on my list because he is Scorsese, the Academy loves him. And he's been nominated, I think, like uh, like seven or eight times for Best Director. Like, and especially his previous movies. Wolf of Wall Street was nominated for Best Director. Even when that had only, uh, I believe, three nominations or maybe even two nominations, he got nominated for Best Director. Hugo, he got nominated. Then previous ones like Aviator, Their Ruby Blood, of course, The Departed was when he actually won. Uh, and he's sort of a veteran of the industry. Silence looks good. I'm super excited for the movie. And I just think that Scorsese will be able to pull that out. I'm not entirely sure of the win because I'm not entirely sure of how well the movie is doing, but I think this has a better chance than what I said before when I sort of had a little good feeling about Billy Lynn's long halftime walk because of Ang Lee. But frankly, Ang Lee's not uh, a Scorsese, essentially. He's not this veteran of, a, veteran of a director, even though he did a really good job with Life of Pi, and I thought they were going to reward him. But that's beside the point. He's not on the list. Uh, the next one is who I think is going to win, and that's Damien Chazelle for La La Land. Uh, I think the direction in this movie is probably the best out of the year. I mean, we have some great categories and just getting the performances out of people from things like Fences from Denzel Washington or Kenneth Lonergan from Manchester by the Sea. But out of a whole, performances, cinematography, music, just the whole tone of the movie, which a director has a lot to do with, uh, the editing even, stuff like that, where he's like, you know, that's sort of a uh, main, main part of the director's sort of post-production schedule. He does just a great job uh, and have all the dance numbers work well. And it's a musical. Musicals are hard to do. Having just the songs work in and out. It's not a musical like Les Miserables, where it's all like music and they're just talking for two seconds. Uh, there's, when they talk about the story, they really go in depth about the story and really flesh that out. And just the balance, I thought it was seamless. Like as soon as that first uh, intro of In La Land comes, then you're just, you're right into the movie. He does a great job with it, just blending that music and dialogue in between the story. You really forget even it's, even it's a musical. They're just these two really passionate uh, lovers in love. So, and then you have the direction. And in terms of the ac ac actors, I must tell Ryan Gosling will get nominated. Uh, maybe not Ryan Gosling, but uh, his chances are starting to get higher and higher. Maybe I was wrong about that one, not putting in my lead actor category. But they're probably going to get nominated. The best cinematography. La La Land's going to get nominated across the board. And I think Damien Chazelle did a great job directing this movie. And, you know, he's been recognized before for Whiplash, not as director, but it's been in the Academy's sort of uh, mind share. And, and, you know, he's not like a controversial figure necessarily and he's a good young up-and-comer I think the Academy are going to award him. Now the next one Kenneth Lonergan for Manchester by the Sea. Now this one is just purely based on two things in my opinion the script and uh, the actors performances. Now of course the director uh, Kenneth Lonergan did write it so he definitely has that, that's the main thing I'd say because he wrote the movie he just has a great vision of where the movie's gonna go and just sort of as the movie goes along 
revealing Casey Affleck's past through flashbacks and why the way he is and where he is at this time because it's a bit of a mystery at the beginning because it's like, okay, he's just this guy in, I forget what it's called, but a place in Boston, Queensley or something like that, and he's a janitor, he has a very weird life, and then he has to sort of be pulled back that, pulled back into his demons. And the way Kenneth Oregon really reveals those is so magical, so spectacular. I'd probably say right now this is my number three. Definitely picked because I think Manchester Spice, he's going to get a lot of nominations for acting, and he's going to get uh, screenwriting, possibly editing, and, and picture. So uh, it's dominant, at least, for sure. I'm not, but I'm not as sure about necessarily the winning of it. But just, And then the performances. Some of the best performances of the year. They could win very well. Best Supporting Actress, Best Lead Actor, Best Supporting Actor. Very possible. And that's thanks to Ken Morgan's great direction. And it, you can tell he's an experienced playwright and play director. And you can tell when it comes to this movie, he is no slouch. Ken Morgan, if he does decide to do more movies in the future, watch out for him because this movie masterfully directed. Next one is Denis Villeneuve for Arrival. Now, this is a controversial one a bit because people have some of my possibles like Denzel Washington or Pablo Lorraine uh, instead of Denis Villeneuve. But, and this is a bit of a hard one for me because Sicario, I thought, was going to do well last year and I was wrong. I missed it. There was not really any buzz and not really any Oscar nominations. But I think, uh, uh, first of all, Arrival did really well at the box office. For a female lead, sci-fi original idea, it did super well at the box office. Also, Denis Villeneuve sort of has his comeuppance, his due. You know, Prisoners was nominated for one Oscar. Uh, Sicario was nominated for three Oscars. And I think this one could get nominated for uh, Best Picture, Best Cinematography, Amy Adams for uh, Best Lead Actress, hopefully at least. And uh, so I think he should get nominated for Director. You know what I mean? When, that's why I sort of hate is that when it gets nominated in every category, a movie gets nominated in every category but not Director, it's like, well, the Director has a lot to do with sort of making sure all those parts line up and look and be used super well in the movie. And I think this is a bit of a little risky one just because they, people think that they won't recognize me because they haven't before. I think, if anything, this is his chance. A bit of a dark horse, but I'm going for it because, you know, sometimes you got to go for it. My last one, though, is definitely probably my number two pick right now. And that is Barry Jenkins for Moonlight. He recently just won Best Director at the Gotham Awards. Uh, and I think that, uh, you know, if you didn't know, Moonlight's been uh, taken eight years for, for to come to fruition. Eight years. The last movie was in 2008. And just the way he melds the stories and how he just, cast, stuff like casting the actors so that they all have the same eyes so you can tell who's who from the three different stages of uh, Little's life. And just uh, fr from having all these actors, there's a lot of actors in the movie, it really is an ensemble, and getting the performances out of each one. And then just the way he told the story was so inventive, so unique. <coughs> and then the tone of it, almost being like a poetry, a melodic sort of thing. And he also wrote the screenplay, and that's another huge factor for me, because I know you don't need to write the screenplay to be a director, obviously, but just having that vision and knowing what each scene it meant and knowing what you wrote the script right so you know what your vision would be so that's that's my uh, deference and now let's go to my possibles first one is Papa Lorraine for Jackie he's probably definitely uh, he's there a possible but I don't think he's gonna get it just because Jackie people think it's gonna do really well it's definitely got the buzz recently but it could die out soon I think it, it, it's a possibility but uh, he does a good job in terms of just being subtle it's not an over the blown sort of like oh wow this is the director you can tell it's his style no, it's just sort of Natalie Portman's show. She's doing U.S. history justice, doing it very well. Sort of like a Clint Eastwood Sully situation where I thought, you know, Clint Eastwood and American Sniper didn't do a great job, but he still got, you know, American Sniper still got recognized as a movie, even though I didn't like it. And, and I think the Oscars, if that sort of uh, not flashy movie uh, can be recognized, it's going to be Pablo Lorraine for Jackie. Although I still something about it, just I don't think he's going to get the directing nomination just because I can think of other reasons why that my previous ones that I've mentioned can get instead. Now this one is probably the main one why people are saying like, why don't you have it on your list? And that is Denzel Washington for Fences. And ah, do I know why I have it on this? Not really. <laughs> but my main thing is that, you know, uh, I'm not so sure about how Fences will do in terms of the other categories. I think you can get maybe Picture, definitely Best Supporting Actor, Best Supporting, uh, sorry, Best Supporting Actress and Best Supporting Actor. Maybe Supporting Actor too, possibly. And, um, but I don't think he's going to do well in those other categories necessarily. So he will sort of lose out on the direction. But the Academy loves Denzel. And, uh, definitely he did a good job apparently taking that, which is so hard to have Broadway play and make it into a movie and does a really good job about that. But another thing is, I, I almost like question, like, 
because he's he I think he's gonna get nominated for best lead actor. So will he get nominated twice for director and actor in two different categories? Uh, it's gonna be interesting. I mean, uh, that doesn't happen very often, or really at all. And um, that's why I just I have this little thing where it's it, I'll be surprised really if Denzel does get the nomination. I'll be like, good for him. You know, he does a great job. He's an industry veteran. He's an amazing actor. If I saw Fences, I'm sure I'll like it. He does a great job with the movie, but. Uh, I just feel that the other guys will have a little more cachet to their names, but even still, Denzel could have that. I think this might be one of his first directing movies. He might, not his directorial debut, but one of his first movies. And taking something that's so hard, like a play, and putting it into a movie, it's going to be very interesting to see what they uh, judge based on that. And the last one is Ben Affleck, The Live By Night. Not a lot of people are saying this. Uh, my other sort of wild card prediction I was going to do is John Favreau for Jungle Book, because I think that movie is so beautifully directed. Even though I didn't like it, I totally respect the hell out of it, and especially John Favreau's direction, because he really is one of the great directors living right now, and people do not uh, recognize that enough. It's truth, truthfully. But I'm going with Ben Affleck for Live By Night, because you know he got snubbed uh, for Argo, and a lot of people were like, wow, surprised, especially because the one best picture that Ben Affleck didn't uh, get the best director. And so maybe that's why people, nobody's having this on the list. Nobody, not even in the Dark Horses, not even in the Possibles, they're not having it on the list. Just because they think Ben Affleck, same with me, but obviously in a more extreme sense, uh, they don't like Ben Affleck. Hollywood does not like Ben Affleck, and they won't recognize him. But also, Live By Night. Uh, I think it's going to be good because uh, Gone Baby Gone, The Town, Argo, not necessarily Oscar movies, of course Argo was, but uh, still great movies. I think this comeback from Argo, just the way I think in my head, it's a comeback from Argo, it's late December release, so that it could have the same problem with science in terms of not enough critics seeing it, but it's a late release, comeback from Argo, and I think if he nails it out of the park, Ben Affleck will shoot to the sky, people are not on his radar right now, but I'm calling it right now, at least for a possible, I'm not having a definite, but he, watch him, because I think he can do good, if Live By Night uh, it, it exceeds uh, expectations, even though there's not a lot of buzz and hype around it right now. So, uh, that's the video. I'm Connor Roll. If you can, please like, subscribe, favorite the video. Leave a comment below. I love interacting with the comments, the few that I get. Uh, share with your friends, even if you like, and uh, sort of, I, I love the channel to grow and just have a little bigger following. But, it, you know, this is not for the money. This is not for being a YouTube star. This is just having a great interaction with people, like-minded people on the internet, which is one of my favorite things about it. And one of the reasons why I make these videos. So next week we're going to be looking at the best animated film, and until next time, stay tuned.